Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the pilot session of our podcast, Circle of Trust. And we have a very special, special guest. Hina Jitwa, one of the founding partners of Circle of Trust by Evenus. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Ned? I'm wonderful. Amazing. <laughs> I just want to hear a little bit about yourself. Please introduce yourself to the audience. I'm Hina Jethwa, and as Ned said, I'm one of the co-founders of Circle of Trust. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Circle of Trust as we go through. Um, my history and my career has always been around people and technology, really. Um, I've been in the business for about 30 years now, which, oh, much to my dismay. <laughs> Or pleasure. So I started in innovation and people and technology. That's been where my career sort of founded initially around customer experience and customer loyalty, then moving on to predictive with SPSS with predictive analytics, where, you know, you can think of predictive analytics as a precursor to artificial intelligence. Uh, a short while after that, I moved to IBM, where I was digital workplace leader there. And here I was managing the Apple IBM partnership and also our infrastructure services part work for in Benelux. And here we were looking at really reimagining the workplace and thinking about how technology could change the jobs we have. At the time, there was a lot of um, mobile apps and things sort of being built, especially for consumers. So we were reviewing how can you look at this technology from a business to business perspective and really change the way employees work. And now I find myself in this amazing kind of at uh, this the beginning or not the beginning but sort of at the early stages of web3 uh, which is really exciting so my innovation journey continues it is great that you're talking about all the propelling uh, that people have for innovation you know that propelling innovation but on the other hand we know that there is also these threats that especially with the rays of AI that people are feeling today. So that will also be a very hot topic that we have to later on touch mm -hmm. on it because like uh, I believe it is great to have, you know, this conversation about all the perspectives that we are dealing with technology so we can make the Internet a better place, a safer place for people. And like, this is basically the meaning of Web3 to me. But I know that Web3 doesn't have that certain and concrete definition right now. So what does Web3 mean to you? I think um, I, I do totally agree with your point about that privacy side. And I think to understand what Web3 means to me, just taking a moment, uh, just because I've been, uh, I think I've been fortunate enough to have spanned all the webs in some degree or fashion. So, um, you know, so if, if we think about web, how it initially, you know, so web one, if for want of a better term, um, how that initiated, I remember being just in my early stages of my career and you know it was a library it was an encyclopedia and it was a one-way read only but it was amazing I didn't have to go to the library to get this information so and then say let's say you know you skip like 10 years to about 2004 where that early onset of web 2 starts happening you start seeing big companies like Facebook and Google and initially the concept was, you know, how can these people stay on my website or my application for as long as possible? And, and that was about personalization and really building that customer experience. Um, but that quickly became all about sort of how do we take this data and leverage it to other people and how can, you know, there's the benefit of that data and so you sort of have advertising agencies come in and then you sort of move to this interactivity, which we all know and love these days. And there's a huge amount there. You've got, you know, you've got all of your social channels that people are doing. Uh, you've, you know, for the even TikTok these days as a newer social media forum. But data has always been king. It always will be. And I think what I love about how Web3 is evolving is that 
as a consumer, as an end user, I can take the data I'm sharing and take ownership of that data and decide how and what I do with it and how that gets monetized. So Web3 to me is partly about me taking ownership and sort of that whole decentralization element that Web3 affords. But also, and I think I perhaps use Web3 as a really broad term and maybe inaccurately so, but you can help me with that, Ned, a little bit. But Web3 to me also feels as this sort of melting pot of all this technology coming together. So, you know, like we're in the metaverse today. How cool is that, you know? Um, We've got the metaverse. We've got all this virtual reality, augmented reality, generative AI. I mean, you've started talking about this already a little bit. Um, All of these things are coming together, but it's exciting in terms of what it can bring. So I totally agree with you. And I love... um you know, the historical uh, approach that you are having towards technology and how it has been evolving, Mm -hmm. um, you know, from Gen X, like people started being excited about all the possibilities like that uh, before even having an iPhone or before even having the ability to do video calls and I remember that from my childhood because like I was living uh, abroad like I'm originally from Iran and I remember that when my parents wanted to call their family from Canada there was the telephone you know the wire telephones no no video calls no applications no voices nothing so I can imagine that like if I was a child in Canada and if I had that possibility to video call with my grandparents, how, how would that feel? Because I remember I had uh, I was like uh, born and raised there. So I had no sense that what does a grandparent in Iran mean? What does that mean? What is the concept? But I, I can imagine that even in uh, delivering the ideas around us, because the technology is right now so accessible and so feasible to people, you know, it makes it the understanding, the comprehension side for people they're way faster. But if you don't have mm-hmm. any vision, any like videos, any pictures, like you, you have to just build those imaginary stuff in your head that what does a grandparent in Iran look like? On the other hand, the layer of identity that Web3 is adding to the internet, that this is something very important, like the individual sovereignty that people are bringing in by that sense of ownership. I believe that these are all uh, very important factors that we are dealing with. But the thing is that we are not in Web3 yet. Like, as you see, we are just sitting here with our avatars, but still it is us. (laughs) And um, (laughs) I have a very big question for you here, Hina. Why is it important to be early in this, especially as you know, uh, a pioneer as, you know, someone who is going to build something? And I think it's really a a really good question. And it's an important one because I'm sure there's lots of people sort of out there thinking, should I start dabbling my toe in Web3? Now, as we talked about, it's not fully defined what it is going to be. But we know since the last 30, 40 years you know, betting on innovation is always going to be, you know, a done deal. I think, was it MySpace? And people went, oh yeah, surely that's going to fail and this internet thing is going to fail. But look at us now. And that was only 20, 30 years ago we're looking at. So technology is evolving really fast. And a lot of the time, the first iteration might not be perfect, but the people who get on board quickly have that ability to adapt and pivot to where it needs to be. So I think there's a couple of things that, um, to answer your question specifically. One is that there's 
there's this advantage that these new Web3 companies, all of these entrepreneurs that are bringing out backed with VC capital, these people are going to be coming in and disrupting what we know and love today. And you saw this like 10 years back when you know, Netflix was a disruptor, Amazon, uh, Airbnb, all of this disruption happened. That was about 10 years ago. And we start to see the beginnings of that happening as well. So you'll have these startup companies coming in, disrupting the market. Now, if I am a corporate organization, I can do two things. One is I can let be disrupted or I can think about given my experience, my knowledge of my market, my clients, what can I do to disrupt from it within? So there's that two elements. And whichever situation, disruption's bound to happen. And I, I don't mean to be sort of doom and gloom here or scary. We just know that that evolution happens. And if I am an early doctor of this technology, I have that sort of um, early uh, advantage, that sort of um, early adopter advantage um, and I can really start one, I can think about creating a vision and strategy around. Also looking at skill sets. I mean, it takes a long time for corporate organizations to think about skill sets, who they want to bring in. Um, if I think about some of the companies I worked with from IBM perspective, that move to the cloud was a huge jump. But they've made a lot of people have made that jump. So they're in a better place to pivot and leverage technology a little bit more. So I think essentially it's a question of when and not if. And my advice is sooner rather than later, because, you know, why not have that luxury of failing fast, you know, creating those MVPs? A lot of companies actually invested in agile and scrum methodologies and things like that. And this is a, an amazing way to put all of that sort of investment in people and methodologies into good practice as well. Well, at least that's my opinion. Yeah. Nice. Um, I want to pick on the word disrupt that you are talking about. What does that mean to you? Uh, disruption is um, rethinking the business model, uh, rethinking how you might be able to connect to that consumer in a more immersive way. You know, so, for example, I read that um, there were 20 million visitors from Nike to Nike land. So Nike land is the Nike equivalent of their metaverse. They had 20 million visitors there. And in those moments, um, you can start creating some really quite cool, immersive interactions with your consumers. Uh, so you can really start creating that more intimacy with the client, which always results into, uh, you know, more more money spent by that consumer, for example. Uh, so disruption to me is one thinking, putting the consumer or whoever you sell to, it could be an employee is your, you know, sort of whoever your king is uh, in your organization, putting them at the center and thinking, how can I create better interaction with that person? How can I be more personalized? And how can I leverage this technology to rethink what we're doing today. So disruption to me is um, reinventing the norm and thinking outside the box a little bit and, you know, pushing the boundaries. I have read this book from Pascal uh, Finnett, Disrupt Disruption. And uh, there was this, this uh, mm -hmm. sentence from, uh, you know, a quote from his book that is like, innovation is the art of creating new things out of the limitations. So I think that we are right now in, 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 a, in a place that we uh, are very conscious about the mm. limitations and it is the era that we are going to change things for the good of individuals. And I think it is really important to, you know, focus on this uh, business models uh, that is going to give give us more benefit. So what we are all 
trying to build here is an ecosystem that is going to be more beneficial to the individuals, to us, you know, to our daily lives. This is what we are actually all looking after. Just to add to your point, it's also about that value generation and creating value for whoever the person is who's consuming your product or service. It's like, you know, finding new ways of creating that value. That layer of uh, identity that is being added will bring on lots of value to our lives. And it'll be, yeah. uh, you know, like having uh, that uh, ownership of the content that you put out there. That is a very important fact. But with the rays of AI, it is being a little bit tricky uh, in terms of privacy, which, uh, which you know, like it, it, there should be a balance. There should be more security boundaries for sure. And I really don't like uh, the way that AI is, for example, using people's voices, like for creating stuff. Like these are stuff that really need to be put under regulation. And also I know that the circle of trust is uh, speaking about AI ethics a lot. Like we have that in our daily and weekly uh, so I think it's it's also the job of these, you know, organizations like uh, Circle of Trust, you know, us that we study uh, what are the ethics, what do we need? And this is how we can push it towards a better and safer Internet. Yeah, I totally agree with that concept of thinking about the ethics. One, being able to understand where the data came from and how that decision was made. Two, there's obviously a lot going on about ChatGPT at the moment and everyone's talking about it, especially with the, the news with Elon Musk recently and uh, quite a few significant players in the IT industry um, sort of asking to put a halt on it. You know, if, if they're asking for a halt, there's a reason behind that. And I think it's really important that we, we do understand the ethics and what's happening with the data it shouldn't be a reason to halt technology. It should be a reason to think about the ethics and how we're leveraging some of this technology. That's the point. Like, there is no stop to it. Like, uh, no. <laughs> there, there was this, uh, you know, sentence at the beginning when ChatGPT was live that the genie is out of the box now. Like, we can do nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't put it back in. No, and and I think uh, just to sort of bring Circle of Trust in a little bit, part of the reason of setting Circle of Trust up uh, is also around looking at some of these like key things. Just to give you a little example, one of the events, you know, we, we started to hold uh, some educational events for Circle of Trust. And the first one we did in the metaverse, we all sort of struggled to get in and, you know, including myself. So, you know, I put myself very much in that category and, uh, you know, how to move and things. But one thing I found that the technology had been designed for not people like me in the sense that it wasn't designed for a woman. You know, it took me a while to find a tire that was appropriate, but still, you know, I'm in this boring black suit that I happen to be wearing as my avatar and you know and it might sound simple but I you know that flexibility to have a bit more representation of uh, women in these things as well and just to you know when I first came in you used to sit down and to uh, you know, you couldn't cross your legs, so you sat a little bit man-like. So there's, it's nice to see that already there's some adaptions made. But, um, you know, to put this more into a business context uh, rather than, you know, what I'm wearing, uh, it is about women also being more involved and people, you know, non-binary, people with accessibility uh, uh accessibility issues, all of us to be a little bit more involved in the way these uh, Web3 is actually being developed and created. It's now is the opportunity because, you know, we can look at things like Web2 retrospectively and go, oh, it was a bit more male than I would have liked or, you know, it's this versus that. But with Web3, I see this as an opportunity to learn 
the good of what we've, you know, had so far. And also think, how can I make it better? And each of us, I think, have some responsibility to think about the future in this uh, technology stage and help bring that ethics, accessibility, sustainability as well. You know, how can I make sure that we're being a bit more sustainable with how we're creating these things as well? And, and a bit more bringing more equity into the web. Um, that's what something that, you know, I'd like to see going forward as well. So I love that how you are giving us some uh, explanation about the role of organizations and you know, teams like Circle of Trust that what is uh, like the roadmap? What is the purpose actually of us coming uh, coming together and building such a thing? And it's great. Thank you for all the insight that you gave us about that. And also I have a question that why should the other uh, people be excited about this? And also... Uh, as you just mentioned a little bit about, you know, the gender, like uh, how is this going mm -hmm. to help different, you know, the, the uh, I can say the spectrum, the gender spectrum and the metaverse and the Web3 to have a voice, to build a voice, to come out differently from what it looked like in the past? Oh, that's a, I, th I think um, a couple of things. I think the way the technology is evolving is it gives us a lot more freedom and a lot more ways to be creative and take um, take ownership of who we are and the type of person we want to be in this environment as well. And I think... Um, I think education and knowledge is part of um, what allows a lot more uh, openness from audiences as well. You know, being a bit more involved and having more education and being aware of different people's preferences and how people behave, what they want to do. Having that awareness, I think, helps. And, you know, I, I have a feeling that the metaverse will create a lot of that um, and just simple things and I, I spoke to a friend of mine the other day and what she's using as part of her company is they have um, like a virtual reality game and what they're doing with this game which I thought was fascinating is uh, you put on the game and say for example you're a senior leader and in your organization there's some um, race uh, microaggressions let's not say anybody's being racist or anything like that but there's some microaggressions yeah going on in your organization and you want to do something about it so her te uh, the technology she has is all about um putting yourself in the shoes of that minority person whatever that minority person might be and you know all of a sudden your avatar gives you that feeling that look and you walk through and then somebody makes a little micro uh, aggression, makes a little comment and allowing people to feel what other people feel from a minority perspective. I think that really can, you know, maybe this is the idealist in me, but I kind of feel that people, if you know what other people are going through, you might think twice about it. And to understand what other people go through, sometimes a moment in their shoes can help. This is great. Like you, uh, this is part of the kind of, you know, extended reality, the technology yes. that is going to help us to get more into these peer to peer connections. I feel personally uh, the decentralization is not here yet, but still we are in the very yeah. uh, beginning of building this great idea and expanding and building on it. Yeah, exactly. Be, yeah, <laughs> it will be so fun. But yeah. all the technologies out here are pushing somehow towards completing, you know, like a kind of missing a piece of puzzle, putting something in the place for building that better internet, that better 
um, usage and being a user, actually being a consumer, changing it into becoming a member, becoming a part of it, becoming a player yourself. Yeah. I love that sort of, uh, that independence that I think we're moving towards from a consumer perspective, rather than perhaps being, maybe exploited is the wrong word, but there is a potential exploitation in Web2 today. And we don't mind it because there's a lot of give back from social media. I think we see it uh, sort of a little bit, um, but I think people, well, you sit in two camps, you either hate it and you're not part of that or you don't mind it. And you you go with the very personalized ads and the feeling that maybe somebody is looking at more of your data. That's where I'm at at the moment, where I kind of feel like, I just talked about flowers and all of a sudden I'm getting adverts of flower, you know, florists. And there's a lot of that going on. Uh, So I'm looking forward to that sort of decentralization where actually my data is my own and I share it with the people I want to share it with. And I allow them to use my data for potential reward, uh, you know, this whole concept of tokenization. And maybe there is some reward there, or maybe that reward is actually I get a better experience with this consumer. And if we bring that back, that decentralization thought, you know, back to the corporate world, that's going to mean a huge, make a huge difference how people market, capture audience awareness and actually get to their end users. So already understanding that sort of um, decentralization and what it means to your organization and the, some, of these con- some of these things around smart contracts, um, you know, sort of already being aware of that will help um, figure out what the vision and strategy is going forward for those companies. So uh, it was a great conversation so far, and we are going to have these uh, conversations weekly together and like Mm -hmm. uh, different people, different guests and exciting stuff is going to happen. Like for my final question, I want to ask you something kind of, I want to play a game with you. So I am that... uh, Web2 coach, business coach that is listening to your podcast today. And I'm very interested in the journey you took towards becoming a Web3 business coach and like becoming a founder of this great, uh, you know, project and with these amazing people. So I want you to put yourself in my shoes right now. And tell me exactly Mm -hmm. what it takes for me to take the first steps and enter this world. I think the first step starts with curiosity. First step is with anything. It's like, you know, it's sort of evoking a bit of your curiosity and uh, figuring out, okay, this is something that's not going to go away. It's something that's coming around the corner. So how can I start learning about this? So getting that education around that, um, understanding, you know, what Web3, we we talked a little bit about Web3 through this podcast. Um, It is about getting education. It's surrounding yourself with people who kind of know about some of these things, you know, um, one of the things, and I don't think, uh, well, let me start with education. I think that's a key part of it. And then, you know, sort of playing around and rethinking what you're doing today, how could you maybe add a little bit of Web3 and then just opening, you know, it's opening the curtain slowly and then opening it more and more and then immersing yourself into this uh environment. Um, I I should take a moment to explain to the audience a little bit about Web3, uh, as in Circle of Trust and what we're doing as part of that sort of educational journey. And really, Eve, uh, 
Eve, um, Eve, uh, Eveness and Eve, our um, co- uh, founder of uh, Eveness, she is the one who's been driving a lot of Circle of Trust. Um, I've come on board with her as part of Circle of Trust. And really what we're trying to build is a sort of Web3 immersive sort of platform where we're bringing together sort of three pillars. It's around um, people, growth and knowledge. And it's around bringing experts to the table, experts like yourself, Ned, uh, bringing, you know, uh, the sort of the top experts in Web3 to the table. You know, everybody's being valid, validated and vetted. So access to the experts that we have. We're also doing from a knowledge perspective, some of these uh, little podcasts, some uh, masterclasses and actually um having some events and things where we're sharing expertise. And then you can drill deeper and dive into some of this technology around Web3 and emerging technologies, sort of bringing them together. And the goal is to grow people's skill sets and business acumen around this technology uh, to see how you can either be part of creating that disruption be a person who's creating and getting the skills that you need for the disruption, you know, or sort of building um, and connecting you to people who can help you on that journey. So we're kind of looking at it from those uh, pillars of uh, people, growth and knowledge uh, to sort of help people and this Web3 journey, which is, I think, uh, personally, I think it's a really exciting journey um, and, you know, What we think it is today will probably change as we go through, um, but it will be exciting nonetheless. Nice. So as as the person like going back, getting back to the game and uh, like the role that I chose, which was a web to coach, like I'm pretty excited right now Mm -hmm. to start, you know, that, you know, that curiosity thing that you were talking about, getting curious yeah. about what is this all about, diving deeper into it. And definitely there are lots mm-hmm. of people like yourself, like Eve, like, you know, lots of great people I know around this space. I got the chance and opportunity to meet all of you amazing people that are willing to help you, that are willing to just Uh, guide you through this answer to any of your questions or you know like just show you that in what direction you should open that curtain so it's it's a very big big um you know uh if you want to start i know that it could be intimidating it's very broad there's no need to get uh you know lost in all the technical jargons there's no need to Uh, you know, be intimidated about feeling that you're, uh, you have been left behind. It's, it's not at all like that. Like you can find the exact right place for yourself. So this is something that I try to tell people when they want to start, you know, start their journey in Web3. You can just take it step by step and there's no need to know all the ins and outs and then like little by little you can just you know uh promote and improve your skills and i think and everybody's level will be different so for example from my perspective um my curiosity around web3 will always be at sort of more of that what can it do from a business perspective and what can it do for um you know, industry and that kind of level, I probably am not going to be the person who's going to get nitty gritty with the blockchain and, you know, the technologies and actually creating uh, elements around it. But I'm quite comfortable at being at this level and figuring, okay, what does this mean? And how can I put the experience that I have um, into practice from this Web3 journey perspective without the need to get techie techie. So I think, um, you know, say, for example, I'm a CFO of an organization, um, you know, I might want to understand what these smart contracts are about and crypto uh, currency and how that's going to impact me. But I probably don't need to know 
the nitty gritty and I might have people on my team who become specialists in those kind of areas. So it's picking the level to sort of carry on your point. It's picking the level that suits you and dipping into that um, and figuring out, oh, okay, I'm comfortable about, I know what's going on. I see how this is going to impact my business, uh, my organization, me as an individual and the people I may hire as well. That's also important, at least as a starting on that peering the curtain analogy, if we continue it. (laughs) Exactly. Thank you for adding these great points. Like it is like a place that everyone can find their passion, what they love, like they, they can just find the right place for themselves, the right spot and uh, exactly as you said. So I really enjoyed speaking with you, Hina. Any final words till our, you know, next podcast next week? <laughs> um, I think I just wanted um, people to know that we're bringing lots of different uh, sort of speakers to the Circle of Trust uh, podcasts that we're going to do. We'll keep it in this quite informal, conversational kind of tone. Uh, uh, just a little backstory. Ned and I talked about how we were going to approach uh, these uh, conversations and we decided to keep it very much a conversation and allow for that sort of fluidity and not be so like, oh, this is your question and that's your question. And so we kind of wanted to keep that free format. So we're going to try and continue this kind of like conversational tone. Uh, I'd love to hear how people find that um, as part of, you know, so uh, please let us know if this is the, this sort of resonates with you as a conversation, but we will be bringing people who talk about gender free tech, accessibility. Uh, We'll bring some senior executives and and, uh, sort of get an understanding as uh, what's going on in their industry, what's piquing their interest. I know a lot of the senior executives I'm speaking to, they're a little bit like, oh, I don't know quite a lot about Web3 yet. Um, And what should I also need to learn about here? So we'll be hopefully addressing some of those messages as well. We'll have the founders of Eveness coming on as well. So you'll get the opportunity to meet Eve um, as part of some of these uh, sessions and some of the rest of the team of Circle of Trust as well. I cannot actually wait for the upcoming (laughs) sessions. And I'm so excited for all the great knowledge that I'm going to learn from each one of you wonderful, amazing people. And as you see, we are sitting in the metaverse right now of Circle of Trust. Please uh, check out our website and just stay tuned. Stay tuned about our future podcasts.